How's it going everyone? Vlad here with solospLC.com and today we're going to be kicking off a new series on PLC programming which is going to be in conjunction with a software called Factory IO. So in this episode our goal is to introduce the series. We're then going to review some of the technical requirements on how to get started on Factory IO. We're going to discuss what Factory IO is and then we're going to connect with our Allen Bradley controller to the software and I'm going to show you some of the basic features of Factory IO as well as how you can get started with the software. Before we dive into the technical aspects of this tutorial, I wanted to briefly mention the tremendous amount of work we've been putting into solosplc.com. If you take a moment to visit the website, you will find a wealth of knowledge for automation professionals. The first resource I want to point out is going to be found under the resources tab, and that's going to be our written tutorials. So here you're going to find a large array of tutorials written by industry professionals on various hardware and software platforms. Next, you're also going to want to visit our forum where you can find answers to some of your questions. You can make comments on some of our content and you can ultimately guide the direction of some of our content. So if you have any question, technical or otherwise related to automation, I highly encourage you to visit our forums and post it there to get a response. The last component I want to mention is going to be the podcast. So you may have seen some of the episodes on the YouTube channel, but if you want to listen some of the conversations me and David Griffith have been having with automation and manufacturing professionals, if you scroll down to the podcast on the resources from the main website, you will find the manufacturing hub that live. And here you can listen on most platforms again, to be up to speed on the industry, to learn from other professionals, to learn how some of them have started their own companies in the integration side. And once again, if you have any questions on any of the content we've been producing, make sure to visit the forums. Now, the first question that some of you may ask is what is factory IO exactly? And if we go to factoryio.com, we will get some of the answers to that question. Now, factory IO is ultimately a 3D simulator that allows you to create manufacturing environments in the uh, simulated world that we will see in just a few moments. That being said, you want to pay attention when it comes to two different concepts that you want to take with a simulated environment. The first one being learning to PLC program and testing some of the concepts that we have been teaching you on this channel. And I think that factory IO is an ideal platform to do just that. Now, if you're looking to simulate a real world scenario for manufacturing purposes, if you're deploying equipment on the plant floor, I don't think that factory IO is going to be the right solution for that. And the reason why I say this, and we'll see this over the next couple of lectures is that the there are many limitations to this tool. So one example might be that you cannot necessarily deploy bent conveyors. You cannot necessarily create the physics that you would want. There's going to be a limited number of sensors that you can use within this tool. And so it provides a fairly, I want to say, ideal scenario when it comes to manufacturing automation. That being said, I think it's a great learning tool and we're going to be doing just that. So the first thing I want to mention is that you can get a trial of factory IO by going to their website and clicking this try for free button. You can download a 30 day free trial. That's going to be working with all the controllers in this specific tutorial series. I want to focus on the Allen Bradley controller, and we're going to talk about that in just a moment. However, let's briefly review the additions that you can get with this tool. So if you click the drop down, you can see that this tool is going to work with Siemens. It's going to work with Allen Bradley, Modbus, OPC, MHJ, AutumnGen, as well as it has a starter edition, which we will discuss a little bit later. That being said, I will be purchasing the Allen Bradley edition to work through this tutorial. If you want to follow along on similar hardware, that's what you're going to have to buy. That being said, if we dive into the ultimate edition, which is going to give you access to all the drivers, you're going to be paying 25 euros per month or 253 euros per year or 695 for a lifetime access. And I just want to give you some information about the pricing, uh, what this platform costs. If you scroll down, you'll see that it mentions that you're going to get access, as I've said, to all the drivers. But in case you want to only work with one specific controller series, if we go into Allen Bradley, 
you'll notice that the price has been significantly reduced. So that's what we're going to be using in my specific series. That being said, if you want to use an Opto 22 controller, maybe a Wago, maybe a PLC next to learn, I think those are just as valid in the industry. You will want to get the OPC UA connector. And so at this point, you're going to be connecting a little bit differently than what we're going to cover here. Before we dive deeper into factory IO, let's turn our attention to the controller and the software we will be using to program the PLC. So the factory IO interface is a purely visual tool that will allow us to draw some inputs and outputs just as you would have in a manufacturing environment. So you would have your push buttons, you would have your sensors, you would have your conveyors and motors, but ultimately P the PLC is going to be doing the heavy lifting when it comes to programming. So behind me, you may have seen, I have a control logics PLC on this side. I also have a few compact logics PLCs. There's going to be one sitting here, one sitting behind my chair. And I also have a compact logics all the way at the top. So that's the 5000 series compact logics PLC. And that's going to be the one we will use for the series of tutorials. So in front of me, I've got studio 5000 open. This is going to be version 32 and it is currently online with the controller. As you can see, we are in a remote run mode and the tool is currently connected. Before you start connecting your controller to factory IO, you need to make sure that your PLC is on the right network and is accessible from Studio 5000 or RS Logics 5000 if that is what you're using. So let's go quickly through the setup. Again, I'm not going to do this from scratch. We have multiple videos if you want to reference them. That being said, I'm currently on the IP address 192.168.1.3 as indicated by the path. If I type in CMD inside of my Windows prompt, I can open a new command prompt window and here I can say ping 192.168.1.33 exactly as the IP address indicates. And as you can see, I can have a clear connection to my device. The other indicator, which is also just as important, it's going to be our RS links. So you need to make sure that your computer has access to the PLC. You're able to go online before you attempt to connect via factory IO into which we're going to get in in just a moment. So this program, you don't necessarily need to pay attention to. We're going to be building the logic from scratch in the next videos. But as I said, it is very important to know how to connect to your controller and we're going to establish the connection from factory IO to our PLC in just a moment. When you first launch factory IO, you will be greeted in my opinion with a fairly unintuitive interface. Now it's going to have a few links towards documentation that they have written online. I like to just dive in. So what we're going to do here is we're going to click on new and this is going to create a new scene uh, what they call inside of this tool. And you'll notice that we will be placed inside of this, what I would call manufacturing environment, maybe some kind of a warehouse. And by using the keys WASD, you're able to move around. It's not very intuitive at first, in my opinion, once again, but if you start using your right mouse key, you can sort of pan around and you can look at what's going on inside of this warehouse facility. That being said, I want to mention that there's going to be three different camera options. So here on the top right, I have the orbit camera, which is by default selected when you install the software. There's going to be a fly camera and last but not least a first person camera. So let's quickly go through them. If I press on fly camera, you'll notice that with the same keys, I can now move around and I can move all the way up to the ceiling. I can go down to the floor. So I'm sort of floating inside of this warehouse and we'll see how we add elements and why this might be useful. That being said, the third camera is going to be a first person camera. So it's going to be representative as if I am walking on the plant floor. As you can see, I'm pressing the space bar key to jump around. And I think that this is the easiest way to get started. Again, as we start building components, you'll understand why. That being said, if I want to connect my controller, I have a couple of options. So here on the bottom right hand corner, I have this Alan Bradley Logix 5000 logo, which I can click and you'll notice that I have a controller pre-configured inside of my driver. If I go back to my scene by using the arrow key, I can also press on file underneath drivers or use the F4 short key. I'm going to be brought to the exact same screen. In order to select the right driver, which is already selected for me, 
we're going to have to use this drop down. In my case, I only have the Allen Bradley PLCs activated. As I had mentioned, I purchased the factory IO license for Allen Bradley specifically. So I'm going to select Logix 5000 and I will be presented with this device at the center of my screen. We're going to configure this in a later tutorial. However, I still want to connect in this video. So what I'm going to do is navigate into configuration. And again, you need to double check the IP address, which is 192.168.1.3 in my specific case. This is most likely going to be different in your scenario. And the next item is the slot slash path. Now, as I said, this compact logic is going to be different than let's say the control logics you see on my right, right hand side in the sense that I'm going to have to specify a slot for my controller. And it's possible it's going to be slot zero. That being said, in the real environment, it may not be. So having the right slot slash path in this field is going to be important. The last thing I want to mention is there's going to be this auto connect button. I have found a couple of issues with it in terms of changing the tags and then being able to repull them. So I've left it unchecked, but feel free to experiment. We're going to talk about IO points in a next video, but leave them as defaults for now. Going back to the PLC, you'll notice once again, I have this device and I need to click the connect button in order to establish a connection. So if I click on connect, you'll notice that it's going to take a few moments. And if everything is successful, I'm going to get this green check mark and I'm going to get warning signs next to my tags. And that is perfectly fine because we have not created any of those tags in my program. You only see that the top four tags do not have this check mark in my specific case because I've pre-created them in my tool. And so it's perfectly fine to get the warning label that the tags do not exist. This is something we will need to address in a later video. That being said, we are connected. We are online in Studio 5000. So we've accomplished all of our goals in this video. If you have any suggestions, if you have any comments about the episode, make sure to leave them down below and I'll see you next time.